of on YouTube before and decided to do it. So it's very exciting to be here. Okay, so I wanted to, I'm going to open up the chat. All right, beautiful. All right, so let me know you guys that you can see and hear me okay, because I'm really excited about the conversation that we're going to have today. I think that's going to be really amazing. And let me know from where you are in the world. So I want to talk about trauma recovery from abuse, from relationships today, why it's so hard and why so many people, so many people struggle with it. Okay. Hi guys. Hi Heather. Beautiful to see you guys. Okay. So let's just jump right into this. Now we know when you've been abused by somebody and especially too when you've had the experience of, and this is what happens with abusers and narcissistic people and toxic people, the reality is so skewered. I really liken it to you feel like you've been hit by a bus and you get accused of being the driver of the bus. So it's not just about that I've gone through the trauma of an abuse uh, from somebody else and that I've had a relationship breakdown. It's the distortion of it. It's been the gaslighting of it. It's been the betrayal of it. It's been the emotional abandonment of it. It's really heavy gauge stuff. Now, what happens with that is we all have four pillars of our inner identity. And what I want to say to you guys is I want you to retrain yourself from thinking that the trauma is from your chin up because I'm just going to be straight with you that actually equals how to lose and you're going to look at your trauma from the chin down in your being in your body in your inner identity which is who you are that's where the fractures have happened to you so in your inner identity there are four pillars and the first one is love and we think love is an outer deal but it's actually not. Love is how you feel about yourself and your position in the world. Okay, everything out there is just an add on to that. Okay, this is about taking your power back. So love is an inner commodity. You can't get love, you can only share love. You can only be love and share it. So let's just stay with that part. Now, the second pillar of your inner identity is approval. That is how you feel about yourself and your place in the world, regardless of others, regardless of others. Okay, now as a child, that was impossible because everything that we gathered and we received and we experienced is how our inner identity was created. But as an adult, we can take our power back. So just stay with me. Am I making sense so far? We have those two pillars, love, which is how we feel filled with life force and how we feel about ourselves and life and our position in it. Approval is how we see ourselves. Do we have self-approval? Do we have self-worth? Do we have self-value? That's what approval is about. Okay, the third one is security. Do we feel safe to be ourselves in life? Do we feel safe to be the expression of ourselves. Now, depression is not actually, the opposite of depression isn't joy. The opposite of depression is expression, the freedom to be yourself. If you're not free to be yourself, you're depressed. You're held back. Does that make sense? So we've got so far love, approval, and we've got secure, security. How secure, secure are we to be ourselves in life? Survival is, can I actually survive? Can I feed myself? Can I have shelter? Can I exist on this planet and stay alive? Now, what happens is when we have toxic relationships, we get smashed at all of those levels of our four pillars. I've got a cat that's about to take my tripod down. Hang on one sec. All right, Chloe, my little Chloe, darling, you can come here and behave yourself. Okay, I'll pop her down. And survival. So we've got love, approval, security, and survival are the four inner pillars of your inner identity. That's from the chin down. 
That's how you feel inside of yourself. Now, what happens in, ab in abusive, toxic relationships is love gets smashed. It absolutely gets smashed. And we haven't known it, but we've positioned ourselves to have an outer source reflecting back to us that's given us the, quote, the quotient of love. And we've had betrayal on that. We've been, been, been abandoned with that. So we feel loveless. We feel unlovable. We feel not worthy of love. Okay, we get blamed for everything. Okay, it gets twisted. It gets turned. It gets projected. Any insecurity we have gets smashed open. So we end up having a very low self-value self and a very low self-worth. We feel like we are worthless and we are of no value. So our self-approval gets smashed. Okay, again, this is from the chin down. I want you to retrain yourself to knowing the thoughts that you have about that are the thoughts following your beingness, what's happened in your inner identity. We don't feel secure to be ourselves. So we're in depression. We're not in expression. Okay, we're depressed. The opposite of depression is anxiety, okay? Anxiety and depression are two sides of the same coin, all right? And then we have our fears of survival. Am I going to be able to rebuild my life? Am I going to be able to hold down a job? Am I going to be able to put food on the table and have a roof over my head? What's going to happen when I'm old and I can't work? You know, all of those things and those normal human terrors all get fully, fully activated. So your inner identity has been massively compromised. Now, I'm going to bring this back to a simple understanding that can really help you understand where the healing actually needs to take place. And I want you to understand this. You can't defeat what you can't define. Okay. This is all from underneath the chin. Now, an understanding of your somatic emotional limbic system is from the chin down inside of you. It's how you feel because how you feel is to do with your inner identity and the composition of it, whether it's healed and whole and healthy or not. You get compromised at that level through abuse, trauma. Now, I want you to say this expression after me. I think traumatized say it out loud i think traumatized does it land tell me in the chat does that land does that feel like a connecting true statement i think traumatized Now I want you to say out loud, I feel traumatized. I feel traumatized. Does that sound like a connecting true statement? This is vital to understand. Can you feel the difference? I think traumatized is disconnected disconnected I feel traumatized is connected with any inner being state any inner being state which is the I think confusion exactly okay but even if you say I feel confused I think confused I feel confused right you will feel it in your body as a true statement. So any self state, any inner identity, inner any identity, you, you state, you can try this with anything you want. Any you state. The correct word is I feel, not I think. And I'm going to explain to you why. Your thinking is a product of how you feel. It's a symptom. Now, what happens when we try to treat the symptoms, but we never treat the cause, the root? 
what happens? You're continually stuck in needing to try to treat the symptom. It's never healed. So you're caught in a loop of forever trying to treat the symptom. Does that make sense? This is so vital to understand. I promise you when I understood this and addressed it, it saved my life, literally. Okay, okay, this is, okay, because I know a lot of you, you might have brain fog and a lot of trauma on board and this is your everyday reality and you're battling with this. It doesn't have to be. You can heal for real from this, but you have to understand how to and where to. Your thinking is a symptom of the inner identity trauma. Okay, now when you say, I think traumatized, that there is the absolute evidence that your thinking brain does not access your limbic, emotional, somatic inner identity system. It actually doesn't even connect with it. So it's like being on a radio and trying to watch a TV station. And completely and utterly from 12 years of age, your limbic emotional programming pretty much shut off. Okay, you went from theta brainwave, where as a little child, you were awake dreaming. Every message you got from outside of you, good, bad or indifferent, had no cognitive filter to say that's right or that's wrong. It all just went bang and, and just got in your inner identity. And then what happens is you get older, you come out of theta brainwave, the delta and theta states, which is like a little person dreaming. That's why kids are so imaginative and amazing. And you start developing a cognitive filter. By the time you're 12 years of age, you're pretty much in alpha and sorry, beta brainwaves, which means that the gate shut. What happened in your inner identity is there. And what happens then is as you get older, you keep having the experiences that match the pre-programming. And a really good way to understand the pre-programming is, I call it love codes, love equals. Okay, and our first, our first experiences of love, which just means relationship, okay, is of course our parents, our caregivers, who were doing the best that they could with what they had with their own love codes and their own traumas and their own epigenetic uh, traumatic histories, which has been humanity because humanity has been stuck in trying to treat the symptom, the thinking rather than the root cause, the inner identities. Okay. So what happens by the time Bruce Lipton and other renowned neuroscientists actually believe, and I do too, that by the age you're around 30-something-ish, 97% of your life is on autopilot. You are literally a pre-programmed heat-seeking missile in regard to your love code because you're already wired. Your thinking follows the wiring whether you like it or not, because you've only got a tiny percentage of thinking to try to change your wiring and you've got a gateway that's shut. Beta brainwave does not get down into theta and the somatic emotional limbic system, which actually needs the reprogramming, the inner healing. It's a big deal. Now, what happens in what we've been taught is that, and we've been taught so many things that just don't work. The biggest problem that abuse and trauma victims had, and I had it forever as well, was trying to think my way out of the trauma. Okay. Now my love codes are very common with a lot of people's love codes. And my love codes were very much things like <clears throat> the people I love abandon me. They leave me. They leave me in the moment. 
when I have an emotional um, age-appropriate child normal thing where I'm feeling something and they tell me not to feel that, I get invalidated. Don't feel that. That's ridiculous. Don't talk like that. Go do something else to distract yourself from it. Can anybody relate to this? Say yes in the comments if you can relate to this. Now, of course, they thought that was the right thing to do. It's not that it was cruel. They didn't know. Nobody told them. But what did that mean? That meant that when I have an emotional self that comes up, a feeling of insecurity or not being good enough or not being lovable, I am told that it's not okay to feel and think that. That's abandonment. That's emotional invalidation. That's abandonment. So unless you had an emotionally mature, and especially us empaths, hey, guys, I, I, I can't tell you. Look, seriously, virtually every person that goes through abuse trauma with a toxic person is an empath, right? You're a sensitive. You care. If you're an empath, you feel your own feelings hugely. You're very connected to them. You can't just switch them off. You feel your feelings, you feel other people's feelings. That's what makes you a beautiful child of God's source creation. Yeah? Now, it's a blessing and a curse, of course. But what it means is you feel your stuff. And empaths are absolutely expressive people, right? As an empath, and that's the most glorious thing about an empath. They generally lead from the heart. They're honest. They share. And this is why a lot of empaths are in depression because you've pulled it in, you've gone into shock and trauma and you're no longer in expression, so you're in depression, right? Now, I promise you, you can be an empath because I am and you can heal this and be free to be yourself. You can, all right? And you still care, but you can do it with boundaries and you can work through this and be free because you're meant to be. Otherwise, you're going to be depressed. Yeah? Is this making sense? Stay with me. There's a lot of pieces to unpick in this. Okay, so my love codes were the people who love me abandon me, the people who love invalidate me, and the people I love don't understand my value and worth. There was a lot more. All right? I want you to share in the chat what do you think your love code was? Do you relate to any of that? Or can you, the people who love me, what was it that was painful? We'll just focus on one love code. Give me a love code. All right, well, I have a sip of my coffee. There's a bit of a delay, I'm sure. And there's no right or wrong. Just really trust yourself, okay? Okay, the people I love neglected me, right? The people that love neglected me, right? Okay. It could be the people I love leave me, the people I love replace me, the people I love um, annihilate me. It could be that traumatic. The people, yeah, abuse me, yell at me, rage at me. Okay, okay, all of those. And it might be the people I love only love me for what I could do for them what they could get from me. Abandonment's a big one. Okay, so good, good, good. You guys are connecting to this. This is awesome. Now, what happens is in our inner emotional somatic self, I want you to think of this word, emotion. What happened is a little person, and it comes before that. I'm a quantum healer. It comes from past lives as well. It also comes from your family, epigenetic, genetic, and soul history. We actually take on traumas from our ancestors and then we land up in the houses, in the families, where it's the same continuation of the same trauma. So our trauma is much, much deeper than the emotion, energy emotion can be a very dense thing that is operating on many different layers in our, sub, in our subconscious. Again, think of it below the chin. Because imagine if you were trying to mine gold, right? And you were just scratching on the surface. There's no gold. You've got to excavate. And I promise you, your greatest gold comes from the deepest caverns inside yourself. Okay, 
So we've got that piece. So you understand a love code. Now what happens with a love code is empaths feel stuff, right? We feel the emotional hit of things. Now, when we've got an emotional hit of something, if we had a lot of traumatic, painful energy around events in our life and we're very wired to take on the epigenetic material from our ancestors as well, if we've got a lot of emotional energy on things that have hurt us, they that it's that emotional, dense energy that super glues the love code in place. It's like it's got cement blocks on its feet. It's in there. Uh-huh. Now, what happens in the usual thing we've been taught is we've got to try and research. We're going to try and talk to people about it. We're going to try and think and process our way out of it. But if you're honest with yourself as an empath, you know that hasn't been working. You know you're doing Groundhog Day. Say yes, me. Yes, me. If you know that there have been certain things that just keep coming up and they keep coming up and they keep coming up and you've tried. A lot of empaths are really good people. And it, we used to just be really good to everybody else. But when you get to the point of breakdown, you go, I know I've got to start being good to myself. And a lot of you, like me, tried. I wasn't lazy. Most empaths are not lazy people. So you'll go to therapy, you'll read, you'll research, you'll join groups, you'll do when you've realized that you really actually have to because you can't just give out your energy anymore. But what's happened is you're doing all of that, but the pain is not going, the rumination's not going, the obsession's not going. And we need to get really clear about this. What's happened is your four inner pillars have been fractured through a traumatic relationship. Okay, and what's happened is your love code's never been, been healed. Here's the big deal. When you actually heal your love code at the inner emotional somatic level, then what happens is you come home to the solid inner identity of love for self, value for self, feeling secure to be yourself in the world, no matter what anybody else is doing. And you also feel like source creation, God. I don't have a problem with the God word because I don't see God as an outer God. I believe that God and us are one and is everything we see. It may be a deal for you. It's not for me. Creation, source, universe, whatever word you want to use, but a higher power, which is life force and love and well-being, have a look around you. If you can look at something beautiful, it exists. If we can start getting flourished and nourished by that true source, instead of handing our power away to false sources that represent our old love code, then you will feel the most secure you ever have in your life. You'll thrive. I just want you to breathe and open your body. Tell, Just say yes if that makes sense to you because I would like to bring you home. Say yes. Open and breathe and say yes. Okay, we've got to heal the root. You've got to heal the root. If you don't heal the root, you will never get there. So what is the root? The root is the emotional traumas and the dense energy that is stuck inside of you. And it's not like you can go to the doctor and say, and he does an x-ray and says, well, you've got a 10-pound grief bucket in there. That's been the problem. When you understand the quantum world and also emotional, somatic, visceral reality, 97% of your life is happening that's not even in the five senses. It's energetic. So we have to be prepared to get out of that programming of what I can see, smell, touch is, is real and say, actually, what's going on inside of me is what's creating everything in my life. So I really want to get curious about that. I want to find out about that. Now I'm going to give you... Another analogy that I hope will really help you 
let's say you were crossing the road and you got hit by a car and somebody beside you and the car drove off it didn't stop and somebody beside you left you on the road with internal damage ran after the driver and fully focused on researching trying to find the driver trying to hold them accountable looking into their history and their past and reading up about psychopathic people that hit people and leave them on the road and just left you on the road you probably wouldn't live you need attention but what happens to us what happens we get hit by the narcissist bust bus and then we start stalking their profiles. <laughs> we start researching narcissists. We focus, we might go see a therapist and we say to them, I got hit on the road by a car and I was lying there bleeding. And I'm gonna talk about, you know, the car came up at this angle and I couldn't see it. And then this happened and then they drove off. And we talk about that. The obvious question is, what about our healing? Talking about it doesn't heal it. Researching narcissists doesn't heal it. Stalking them on their social security, so social media doesn't heal it. Healing heals it. We would have to get to hospital, right? Does this make sense? See, this is what's so crazy. When you start understanding this and you stand back and look at it from just a rational not even quantum just a logical rational level you're going why on earth have we been taught and trained to be doing the things that we're doing Do, does anybody like Pima Chodron's quotes I think they're amazing the late Pima Chodron amazing 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 woman Leon saying we don't know how to take care of ourselves yes we weren't trained to even more than taking care of ourselves, we need to heal ourselves. We need to heal the root. Just like your internal bleeding, you need to go to hospital and you need to have surgery. It's the same thing. We need to heal. We need help. We need to heal. Okay, so Pima Chodron had a beautiful, one of her beautiful expressions was, I'm paraphrasing, if somebody shoots you with an arrow in the heart, it's pretty stupid to stand there yelling at the person who did that. You need to actually turn your attention to there's an arrow in your heart. Now, this is another thing that we've been taught, which is so insane. Don't feel your feelings. Don't admit there's something wrong with you. Be tough. Get on with it. Move on. I'm not going to give the abuser the, you know, the pleasure of knowing that I'm broken. Well, guess what, dear soul? You're bloody broken and you need to heal it. Otherwise, you're going to continue being broken and continue with the same program pattern no matter how you try to defeat it logically where you're going to keep running into the same people in a different flesh suit over and over and over again. And that's what I used to do till I hit the big bad wolf, which was life over for me. I was a millimetre off death when I finally got it. Thank God I did. We wouldn't even be having this conversation. And this is why I'm so passionate about it. So we need to say there's been an arrow in my heart. Who gives a shit if they get like uh, some kind of pleasure out of knowing we're broken? It's got nothing to do with them. What's the best revenge? Healing and they become irrelevant. It's like you, you, you're actually nothing now. You're actually the catalyst that brought me to my knees to turn within to save myself from these programs that were always there. And if you hadn't have come and put me on my butt to ignite them and fully activate them, somebody else would have because this was actually a soul journey to free myself. That's what thriving is. So it's like when people say, you know, I've had people come into my community and they've said, you know, I went and saw a therapist and they said to me, well, this was just bad luck. It could happen to anybody. And I'm like, no, actually, this was an exaltation for you. This was as it was for me. This was the most grandest opportunity to mine my gold from my deepest darkness. 
for me to be able to heal and repair those love codes that got set up right at the beginning. As a past life regression therapist, I've been doing these things over and over again from lifetime to lifetime from lifetime, having amazing potential to be a way shower in the world to make a difference. And a lot of you are the same. Narcissists go for people with the greatest light. They are the darkness to take down the light, to stop you doing what you're meant to be doing on this planet, period. Okay? That's why this happened. This is a battle of light and dark. And this was for you to get free to be yourself. But how do we get free to be ourselves when we don't even know what we were trying to get free from? I didn't know. I thought it was my normal. My normal life was to be really shy, to kind of try and please people so I didn't step on their toes and hurt people, be a nice person, have lots of integrity, scared to speak up in case I got smashed, which was my childhood and past lives all over again. So I would hand my power away to be loved and be safe and that didn't turn out really very well at all. Okay? And a lot of us as empaths have been that, that person. Whereas we've needed to heal up to grow a set of brass testicles and ovaries, quite frankly, so that we are free to be ourselves regardless of what other people are or aren't doing as adults in our own body. But there's a journey to do it. With your traumas on board, it's virtually impossible because you're just re-traumatizing yourself by trying to do it and you're getting the evidence of your traumas constantly because that's how inner trauma works. What do subconscious programs do? They unfold the reality of the program to the letter. Your subconscious programs, I want you to think about your subconscious. Our subconscious is supernatural. Why is it supernatural? Because what our subconscious does for a start, it runs the trillions, probably quadrillions of chemical processes in our body for us to be a living sentient being. Like you think about it, all of your systems, all of the ways they integrate, everything that happens is our mind doesn't even know those processes. Like science has probably only scraped the surface. Logically, we can't even comprehend that. Our subconscious just does that by itself. It is an absolute phenomenal supernatural powerhouse. Our subconscious does more than just run our chemical processes that keep us alive and a functioning being. Our subconscious literally reaches out into the entire field at the quantum level of oneness at the wave function, everything is connected. So our subconscious is pulling the strings out in the field massively. So whatever our subconscious is programmed on is what's going to come into us. It's what we're going to choose. It's what we're going to roll around with. It's what we participate on. It's what we focus on. And our mind knows better and tries to convince us of better, but it's got like three to 5% power, 40 bits per second, as opposed to 40 billion bits per second that's on autopilot that's actually running our life. So it'd be like you've got a computer program and you've got a five-year-old, actually five-year-olds probably know it better than adults, but... In the analogy, you've got somebody who doesn't even understand anything about the computer program on the surface trying to make a different reality happen. It just, our brain just doesn't work that way. But there are very, very easy ways to get into the computer program. There are such, and this is the crazy bit about it. Okay, just let me know. You, have you kept up? Am I making sense? Have you kept up? Okay, is this just breathe, open your body, because this is where you get transmissions, okay? This is where you get epiphanies and awarenesses when you just keep breathing and keep your body open. Am I making sense? Okay. 
Now, the good news is, and what I want you to know, it's actually very simple to go straight to the program and work on it. It's actually so simple, it's ridiculous. When we're in our head trying to work it out, it's confusing, it's complicated, it doesn't connect. We're in rumination and obsession. We're in the constant disappointment of, okay, I've read an article and that really lands, but then half an hour later it hasn't landed at all because it was an idea and it was a concept. It was never embodied. So you never got a shift. Information is not transformation. And that's where nearly everybody goes wrong. So they're trying to remind themselves all the time, which is why you have to research, you have to get on, you have to watch another YouTube, you have to read the article five times over, you have to put up affirmation stickers and say them to yourself every single day, you're having to do your affirmations, or you're trying to remind yourself because you never rebodied yourself. When you rebody yourself, there's no necessity to remind yourself because the mind always, always follows the body. Once you've rebodied, your mind completely matches your body automatically, organically. That's how it works. Because you've had a shift of consciousness. Does that make sense? Okay, just breathe, keep your body open. As I said, this is where you get transmissions. This is where it gets in. If that was the case, and it is, if you could rebody yourself and your mind just followed naturally, organically, how would that be for you? How would that be for you? Just tell me, how do you, how do you, how, do, how would that feel? How would it feel? Mm-hmm. Easy. Would the battle and the struggle be over in the thinking department? I promise you it is. Now, when I say it's easy, the process is easy, but the challenge is you have to do it. You have to do the inner work. You have to commit. You have to say, I've had enough of the pain. I've had enough of the rumination, the obsession of the lost hours, weeks, days, years, decades of my life where I'm not my optimal best. I'm not free to be me. I'm not flourished and nourished. I'm not successful. I'm not happy, I'm not self-loving, I'm not able to connect up with true healthy love and lay boundaries and have difficult conversations and actually be able to generate and maintain healthy relationships. You have to be at the point where you say, I'm sick of living the way I am and I'm going to commit to actually doing the reprogramming. You have to do that and it is work. The process is simple. What's difficult is the commitment. And do you know why the commitment's so hard? Because we've been trained that we are the last person. Your inner being is you. It's you. We've been trained to believe that we are the last person we should commit to. I love the fable of Buddha. Three men went to Buddha and said, where's divinity? I want to find divinity. Buddha said, go search. One man went to all of the highest mountains on earth. Another man went to all the caves and the nooks and the crannies. Another man explored all of the oceans. They all came back empty handed. And they said to Buddha, divinity is nowhere. And Buddha said, I needed you to exhaust every possibility until I could tell you where it is. Where do you think it is? 
Buddha said it's within you. It's true. It's true. So what we've been doing, of course, and I did it. I'm going to get a gym membership. I'm going to go and eat healthy. I'm going to go and seek all these things. Maybe I could find somebody to love me healthily. Maybe I could go and talk to somebody for the next 10 years. Maybe, 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 maybe. Okay, I did it. I think I went to the top of every mountain and every nook and cranny and underneath the ocean and everywhere. And I've been doing that for years in and out of the narcissistic relationship. And I ended up breaking no contact more times. I had credit cards stacked up with therapy and everything that I was trying to learn and do and do and do until I broke into a complete psychotic adrenal breakdown. I was 37 kilos, 80 pounds, all of my hair had fallen out. I hadn't slept for like any more than an hour for about six months. I was lucky to have a meal a week. And then I broke completely and had the epiphany. And I actually had the voice in my head and the epiphany, which was an awakening and it was a spiritual divine intervention, 100%, where I was told what I just told you. And from that day onwards, I self-partnered. And then what I did is I knew it wasn't about him. I knew this was about freeing myself from my inner love codes and traumas that had been there since past lives and had happened again in childhood and reignited and been a part of my whole relationships. And he had just been showing up as the evidence of my subconscious of those programs. He invalidated me like no other. He abused me. He abandoned me. He did all of the things that were my inner love codes. So that started a journey for me where this stuff really, I mean, it's pretty, it's out there now. Like you've got Joe Dispenza, you've got Bessel van der Kolk, you've got the late Candace Pert, you've got, you know, um, who the bleep are we? You've got a lot of neuro um, quantum science that is out there understanding of how powerful our inner somatic limbic emotional programming is and what it actually unfolds in our life. And none of this is about blaming ourselves. I didn't ask for my past life trauma or my childhood trauma. You didn't either. Okay, so these wounds are not our fault, but they're our responsibility to heal because nobody else can. People can give us the tools, but we're the only ones that can heal it. Now, what have we been programmed into? We've been programmed into a victim consciousness of blaming People, yeah, and they did do it. Absolutely, they did it. But it was matching our already existing programs. Otherwise, it could not have happened in a quantum reality of so within, so without. You know, when I used to say that to people, so within, so without, and if anybody had said it to me, I would have wanted to punch them in the cake hole. You know, I got a narcissist because you're saying I'm a narcissist. No, 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 no. That's not what it is. I'm saying the narcissist matches your inner traumas that were already there. The people I love annihilate me from past lives, childhood, whatever it is. In your epigenetic history, you might have had a great childhood, but there's been narcissists in the family epigenetics. Mm -hmm. And you've taken on that trauma as an empath from maybe even an aunt or an uncle or a grandparent or your own parent. You've carried it in your body. Okay, if it's in your body, it's going to show up outside of you. Is this making sense? So the victim consciousness, yes, we need to acknowledge narcissists and understand the paranormal experience of these dark souls that are disconnected from source and themselves in a false self. Yes, but once you've got that, again, you don't want to be lying on the road bleeding while you're just trying to find the driver, okay? You need to get into the hospital, you need to start healing if you're going to heal. So where was I? I kind of got a little bit lost there. All right. So it's about that, that, that this is what neuroscience and quantum science is absolutely proving. And our, our, it's a lived experience. Absolutely for myself that when I said, okay, this is the trauma in my body I need to address. I can't change him. I can't get him to validate me. I can't even hold him accountable, okay? Narcissists are rarely held accountable 
apart from when we heal, then there's a very bizarre thing that happens in the ethers, which is all to do with energetic reality, that when we're carrying the wounds and the trauma, what they've done for their, they've done to us, we're actually taking the karma. What is karma? Traumatic energy wedged as emotion in our bodies that creates more of the same because it just does. It's energetic law. It just does. That's karma. That's bad karma. So when we actually get the trauma out of our body and we get released from the old programs and the love codes and the traumas, what happens is it goes back to sender. I can't tell you how many narcissists in this community are defeated every single day. And people go, they'll never be defeated. We can never defeat a narcissist. They'll never be out of my, my children's life and everything that they do. And they're like terminators. They're like terminators because you're carrying the inner love codes that match it. That's why it doesn't stop. It's that simple. I'm telling you the truth. So when you clean that up, they cannot exist in your universe, in your hologram. They're gone. They're done. They're finished. Am I making sense? You are in an energetic, which is emotional, spiritual, which is emotional, war. This isn't logical. This is not practical. And you know, with toxic people, you know, the more you try to combat it logically, practically, the more it blows up in your face, the more energy you put on what a narcissist is doing to you and the disgusting creature that they are and the, the stress and the trauma you're under, the more you are putting petrol, gasoline for you guys in the States, we call it petrol, you're putting gasoline on a fire. It's worse. And it's a shock, isn't it? It's a shock when that happens to you. But what happens is when you understand quantum law and the emotional, energetic, spiritual nature of this, 97% of it is happening in the ethers. You know in Harry Potter, the Dementors? Remember the Dementors, the soul suckers? That's what a narcissist is. So when you're in fear and pain, they feed off you like leeches. you got to stop that feed. So the narcissist in my life was like a terminator, would not stop, was destroying my life at every corner, every level. And it's great it happened at that level because I really got to live it. And it nearly killed me until I had the breakdown and the epiphany. Everything about him and out there is matching what's in here. Everything. All of I had terrors of persecution. Terrors. As a child, I hated being wrong. Say yes in the say yes in the chat if you have hated being wrong. As a child, I was perturbed if I did anything wrong. It was the most horrible thing. I'd be so sorry. I'd be so apologetic. I'd be so terrified of being punished for it. Were you like that? Okay. This is very common for empaths. And what happens to us? Narcissists smear us and we feel like we're going to die. The white hot panic is so terrifying. It's horrific. When I went in quantumly to work on my inner identity, on persecution problems, programs alone, I discovered the energy in my energy field of so many past lives where I got persecuted and put to death that was still sitting in my energy field. So it's no wonder the people I trust and love throw me to the wolves, get me destroyed, put me to death, annihilate me. I had it. I know a lot of you have too. If you have white hot persecution trauma, you have got those programs. A lot of empaths have them. Say yes if this is relating to you. You've got to look deeper in this spiritual battle. You've got to look deeper. This is a soul evolution you're going through. This is not just, 
I'm recovering from a narcissist and I'm going to be a survivor. It's not that. It's much more spectacular. Okay, you guys are relating to me. I'll tell you another one that's massive. If a, This is for the girls usually, okay, us women. If a man leaves me, I'm going to die. Tell, Say yes, me. Yes, me. A man, if a man leaves me, I'm going to die. Be honest. Open your body and breathe. Be honest. Have you felt like that? Has it felt like that? The terror of that? Okay. I And then people say to me, yeah, but it's because, you know, he... He, um, you know, keeps the security going. He pays for things. I can't survive financially. Ladies, I have met women over the last 15 years that have millions of dollars, have had the no hope narcissistic boyfriend sponging, and he dumps her for another woman or she had to kick him out eventually. She is in bed under the covers feeling like she's going to die. It had nothing to do with the money that she could, that she had. It's an emotional unhealed trauma. So we have to understand emotional unhealed traumas are not logical. And the ones that we carry through from past lifetimes and our childhood, where we were powerless, where we did not have adult mature uh, capacity, they literally feel like we're powerless, we're helpless, and we're going to die. We call those survival programs. Virtually every human gets tripped up on survival programs by toxic, abusive people who are like, they hone in. Toxic, abusive people, their survival with you know, shitty, disgusting personalities and behavior. Like it's pretty crazy when you think about it that they can be so disordered and so malfunctioning and still have people attached to them. It's trauma bonds. And the glue that is a trauma bond is they work out with you your survival program. They show up in your life pretending to be the self, the support, the answer, your source of healing for that survival program. So that hooks you because it's like, oh, my God, you're my, it can be so unconscious. You know, like mine of abandonment was like, oh, my God, he's never going to leave me. You know, that was the feeling like, oh, my God, finally I'm safe. But then what happened is every time he would train me into having no rights or no value or caving in to his crazy demands or, you know, being too scared to speak up, he would hit me with abandonment. He'd walk out the door. He'd switch off his phone. I'd be dry reaching and vomiting with the terror because of the abuse that just went down before he'd do that. So they, they, so we, here we go, here we go. So what happens is, is the trauma bond is our unhealed love code. These people come in pretending to be the healer of them or as a parent or, you know, a family member, we're just programmed. Well, of course they're meant to be. They're our parent, our caregiver, you know, so that's a trauma bond in itself, isn't it? They're meant to uh, nurture us and have our best interests at heart and have our back and love us, of course. And they don't because they're disordered. So we've got the trauma bond and they know how to play that trauma bond to keep you attached to them with their disgusting behaviour, especially as an adult. So it's the healing of our love code that gets us off the trauma bond, but that's the inner work. The problem with the mind is the mind will keep defaulting back to the disgustingness of the trauma bond and what happened to you and be in the spinning of your wheels thinking about it and how they could do that and why they do that and what did they mean when they say that and I should have done this and I could have done that and all that and it just doesn't stop. Say yes if that's what because I know. 
And then people will tell you, well, you're going to have to talk this out for the next two to four years and eventually it'll feel better. Crap that. Crap that. Like, seriously, what is that? Like, it doesn't have to be that way. Pain is inevitable. Okay, trauma is inevitable in these cases, but suffering is optional. We can get out of the pain. We have to turn within. Now, when I did my journey and I had my epiphany, I'm going to give you some tips today that can start turning this around today. But I need to explain to you what PTSD is. Okay, PTSD triggers we're triggered da, da, da. okay that's you know the the surface thing of ptsd who's got ptsd here tell me say yes if you've got ptsd all right if you've been abused by a toxic person gaslit lied to you've got ptsd say yes if you've got ptsd okay Many of you may believe that PTSD is something that you might have for life and you need to medicate it and you've just got some kind of strategies to try to manage it, but you're going to have to live with it. I know heaps of people who don't do the inner work and haven't understood it quantumly who believe that PTSD is for life. Okay, CPTSD, absolutely complicated post-traumatic stress disorder. I had it too. Through the roof. Couldn't even go vertical without shaking and sweating. It was that bad. With fibromyalgia and agoraphobia and everything else that goes with it. Okay, which I know I'm not exceptional. This is normal after this level of abuse. Okay, I'm here to tell you PTSD is not a life sentence and it can be healed completely quicker than what you would ever understand. So until you do it. Okay, I'm going to give you my journey Okay, as I said to you, I had a complete adrenal psychotic breakdown. I had all of the symptoms of narcissistic abuse. I was like 80 pounds. All my hair had fallen out in clumps. I was told that if I didn't have three antipsychotics, I could actually have a stroke or a heart attack at any time. And I was told I would never again function as normal, that I might have about 30% functioning from what I had before the breakdown, even on the antipsychotics. Now, I wasn't good with aspirin. I've never even been good with like a Panadol, a painkiller. It doesn't agree with me. I knew that was the end. Okay, so I was literally suicidal. I thought there's no way out of this. And that was when I, in a complete surrender in my bathroom, had a mind-blowing epiphany, which started this whole Thriver thing from the in, healing from the inside out. Because I got shown, I got told, I had a voice in my head. And maybe our brain has to completely break. We have to be out of our mind to get the truth. And then my whole journey was about getting out of my mind and getting to the truth in my body. And it, I'm so grateful for it. And I'm so grateful it got to that level. Because I was pretty stubborn. Nobody could have told me. I had to experience it. <laughs> okay. And I am so grateful for it. So, all right. So what I understood from the epiphany was that I had to stop trying to think and learn my way out of it and I needed to self-partner. Self-partner is very different from self-parenting. Self-parenting is trying to reparent the broken child. Self-partnering is a more higher divine experience. But anyway, how it started for me before I had the quantum tools was that night I had a bath and I just got directed, the voice was still talking to me, and I imagined my little inner child, little Melanie, and I just imagined her, and she was in a shocking state. She had on dirty clothes, she was crying, her hair was tangled, she was just so distressed. And what I got directed to do was to reach out in my imagination, I wasn't even meditating, I was just imagining, I opened my body and I breathed and I just held her and imagined her with my eyes closed and I said to her, sweetheart, I am so sorry. I haven't been here. 
And I said, darling, I love you. Even though you're like this, I'm not judging you. I understand you're like this. I am so sorry, honey. I don't know how I'm going to heal you, but I am dedicated and I am never, ever, ever leaving you again. And that's what I said to her. And I just held her and I imagined opening my heart and pouring love into her. And I knew in that moment, little Melanie, all of these years, probably lifetimes, she hadn't wanted the toasted cheese sandwich or the alcoholic stupor or the 70 cigarettes a day or the abusive partners or the ridiculous gym regimes and three hours of yoga every morning and five hours of affirmations. She'd wanted me. She'd wanted me. And the craziest thing happened, which the medical profession told me was impossible. They said, you will never get your nervous system under control without three antipsychotics. You, it's too broken. I started from that day forward and I was still massively broken and sick. I, I really was. I wasn't healed at all. But from that day forward, all day, every day, every time I started panicking, I learned from the epiphany, open your body, breathe. I imagined her and I kept saying, sweetheart, you're doing a really good job here. I'm here, darling. I love you. I'm not leaving you. And I just said it over and over and over and over again. Now, even before healing the core, I hadn't healed the core yet. Within a week, and I was broken, medication free, no antipsychotics. My CPTSD had gone from 100 out of 100, probably down to about 15 out of 100 within a week. Why? Why do we have CPTSD? I'm just going to tell you beautiful people because you've been lied to. Because you haven't shown up. Because your inner being is screaming for you and you're not there. That's the reason. Okay, yes, it got triggered off by what other people did. Absolutely. But your inner being, imagine a child you adore, okay? A child you adore and let's say something shocking happened to that child outside of the house and they came into the house and you said, piss off. I don't want to listen to you. I'm going to go have a drink. I'm going to have a toasted cheese sandwich. I'm going to go and ring somebody. I'm going to go run back to an abuser. I don't want to listen to you. Why do you think that child's got CPTSD? Can, are you hearing me? The problem is we've been trained out of ourselves. We've been programmed. Do you know? Ancient tribes understand this perfectly. They know this wisdom. This is not new wisdom. This is old wisdom that you've been purposefully trained out of. Because what does that mean if you're trained out of soothing you and healing you? Of course we know what that means. You're going to be paying a shit ton of money out there trying to manage your symptoms. Think about it. I'm not going to say any more than that on YouTube. All right? And of course, what happens when we've got trauma unhealed inside? We're addicts trying to self-soothe, but it's kind of like stapling sandwiches onto your jumper and pretending you've had lunch. It's never going to work. So you need more, 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 and more of whatever it is to try to get better because you never get better. Yes? So what? I, this is a big takeaway from today. What I want to do today and be brave. But you know what? It's not even brave. Honestly, when we're disconnected from ourselves, trying to survive ourselves, that's bloody brave because it's so freaking hard. It's shocking trying to live that way. It's not brave to turn in because when you turn in and hold your inner child like you would a child you adore and talk to your inner child in a way that is loving and supportive, 
you feel relief immediately. Do you know that day in the bath after my complete breakdown, after I was told the next day that I would have to go on antipsychotics, which I talked them out of the next day, that was a miracle. That day in the bath where I held little Melanie and I pulled my love and I gave her my pledge of allegiance to her, with the ferocity of a mother bear looking after her cub, that is the first day in my life I felt love for real. The first day. And it didn't become about everybody else in my past lives and my childhood and my abusers and all of that. It, that became irrelevant. This was about me re-partnering myself. I have no control over them. None. None. I only have control over my inner being. And the ironic thing of that is at the quantum level, my entire life is unfolding from there. So why wouldn't I? So anyway, then what happened from there is magically CPTSD just started dissolving away before I even had the quantum tools because I'd showed up. So my inner being, rather than being panicked and triggered and freaking out all the time, was like, Mum's here. Oh, my God, even though I'm still not well, at least I feel safe. That's the end of CPTSD, I'm telling you. Truly, nobody will tell you that, but it is. So then the quantum tools came about. I knew I had to heal from the inside. I knew talk therapy and research and information is not transformation. So I went for transformation. I looked into things like kinesiology, theta healing, EMDR, uh, EFT, body code. I could go on and on and on. Okay. So I studied and I learned and I started having amazing results. Amazing results. And I trained in a lot of these things. And what I discovered on this journey is that it's not about trying to work out and process the trauma in your head. It just adds to it. It's about getting to the dense energy in your body in the language that the subconscious understands, which is visualization and intention and feeling somatic holding and feeling and a visualizing release techniques finding the compartments in the subconscious to get the toxic trauma out and let it go. And I discovered that the body modalities that were filling the space where the trauma once was with higher source, God, source, consciousness, the divine mind, true love, true source. I'm sorry, beautiful people, but if you're not prepared to, to uh, believe in a higher power, which is actually your higher self, your super conscious. If you don't understand that God connection, oneness particle that you are, you're never going to go home. I'm just going to say it. I'm not religious, by the way. But if you are, that's perfect too. Doesn't matter which way you want to look at it. If you are trying to heal through your logical mind, which is 5% of your entire capacity, doesn't even connect to the field, by the way. It's just what's going on in your head. If you're trying to do it through there, you are not going to make it. In this journey, in this journey that I've done, which is now, I think I've come across like 10 million people in the last 15 years. I do not know one person who's healed this logically, not one. If you can show me that person, I'll go he. Because I actually know it's impossible. Okay? Right. So what I found in the subconscious healing modalities that I discovered, the God particle that can heal what we can't heal, it's the light. When you can get that in where the trauma was, you can get that instant body shift out of who you were being in a 3D traumatic consciousness dense body state back to a light body, which is a higher potential state, which is well-being, which is love, which is truth, which is liberation, which is emancipation to who you really are. And it doesn't matter who anybody else is being. It actually doesn't. Because then you get to generate and create more of that. 
with self, life and others. And narcissists become a whole nother reality. It would be kind of like you've come up through the trenches, you're off the battlefield, you're not in Beirut anymore, you're in a completely different reality. And if anybody from Beirut steps into your reality, you can just powerfully be yourself. You don't have to shrink, you don't have to hide. And where there is light, there is no darkness. But you've got to do the work. Now for myself, what happened was I became, and I'd always been very um, in personal development, spirituality, I'd always been interested. But I'd never done the inner work until I got into the body modalities. And hence why I'd ended up hitting the brick wall that was going to end all of that for me. So the body modality started working. But then what I discovered, and I trained in a lot of them, and I found bits of this and bits of that worked and bits of this. And I was, and what happened when my brain broke and the voice spoke? I'd had it as a child and then I kind of blocked it out. Maybe a lot of you empaths have had those experiences as well, where you've had spiritual experiences. I had that the whole time as a kid. And then, of course, I was a rebellious teenager and I drank and I went down all the wrong paths and I did all the wrong things and, you know, whatever. But anyway, when my brain broke and the voice spoke, it actually hasn't stopped since. So the voice was guiding me on this journey and the right people and situations were turning up and, and I was channeling how to put these healings together. Eventually it ended up in quantum freedom healing, which is what I use on myself and which has been used on thousands and thousands of people in this community to do that inner work, that inner somatic emotional limbic system work to get the trauma out and get the light in. And the process is actually so simple. Once you start using it and you train in it, which is just following an MP3 of my voice, you're actually going to be doing the real work. And you don't even have to remember the wounds. You don't have to even go into the childhood. You don't have to because the system does it all for you through your energetic somatic body. And our brain really hates that because our brain's like, but I've got to remember where that came from. No, you don't because the body keeps the score. So, for example, let's say I could say to you, all right, this abandonment wound that you know, let's say you've been left or you had to leave a narcissist and you are still traumatized by abandonment. It's a really common one. When you actually do the quantum freedom healing process, what you do is I'm going to target the trauma in my body that's generating abandonment. You're going to feel some dense energy somewhere, open and breathe and go, oh my God, I feel a kick in my heart. Whoo, that's really heavy and I feel sick. All right, and then you open and breathe and just follow the instructions of the MP3, which is going to access your pain body, which is the link between subconscious and conscious that you feel the most. It's going to access your past life timeline to draw all of the toxic trauma of abandonment out. It's going to go into the childhood abandonment trauma and the epigenetic wounds of your ancestors that have suffered abandonment. It's going to go to your multidimensional self, which is the multidimensional, interdimensional future timeline, parallel lives that are experiencing abandonment trauma, picks up all of that, loads it up, then releases it out from you dissolves back to native nothingness and source for recycling, opening up the space for you to bring in the higher consciousness source, super conscious replacement, which is I am loved and I am accepted and honored and adored by all of source because I exist. The oneness that wipes out abandonment. None of this you have to logically concept. You just have to follow some very simple instructions. So, it also works directly on your inner child and three other subconscious subconscious compartments that need that shift. And that's what a quantum freedom healing does. So within half an hour, you could be feeling so abandoned that you're ready to break no contact and you feel like you can't even put one foot after the other and be vertical. Within half an hour, you'll be like, oh my God, I can eat and sleep and breathe and I'm not going to break no contact. Now, you may have to do that same healing, that module one healing where you're targeting abandonment, 
You might have to do it three times a day for the first week because it's so deep and there's so much trauma on it as a survival program. You might have to do that shift once. You might have to keep it going for some time. But what you will get is your soul, your source and your sanity back. And even greater than that, what happens is that program of abandonment that at best, because it is past life and it is deep and it is a survival program and it's probably stretched out for the next 30 years in your future timeline, if that's not all gathered in and healed, it's kind of like a tree. You can cut down the trunk, but if the root systems are there, it's just going to grow back. And that's been our society. Let's just muck around with the symptoms and we never heal the root. Okay? Cancer's very like that too. If you don't actually get to the stem cells, it can just reinstate. It's the same with our traumas and our programs and our patterns come from our traumas unhealed. So this cleans it up. How do we know it's cleaned up? It's so gorgeous when you understand the brain body connection because you'll be able to look back at those abandonment things that happened to you and it's like watching a movie of yourself and there's just no energy on it. There's nothing. It's like that happened to somebody else. Now, unless you work with trauma at a quantum way and heal the core, that's actually impossible. You know, you see memes all the time that, you know, I learned from my scars, but I'm always going to have them. No, I don't even recognize the person I used to be. I don't even know that person because I don't have those traumas. They just don't exist. I could tell you the most disgusting things that happen through the narcissist that are mind bending. And to me, it's like I'm just talking about watching somebody else in a movie, right? And that's, and that's why my brain doesn't go there. Again, I don't even think about it because it's gone from my body. And I have the superconscious source replacement, which not just healed me from him, stepped me up into self and life in a way that I would never have access to before I healed those programs. So this is the evolution, the transformation, the evolution of self that happens where your greatest gold is mined from your deepest darkness. That's what's so exciting about this. So anyway, that's the journey I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to get you out of thinking that you're trying to think and process your way out of it and be open to looking at how to heal the core. Right? Yeah, lion-hearted, it was an amazing discovery. Um, do you know what? I think a lot of you guys know this. I really do. A lot of people that are abused by narcissists are here for amazing gifts. I really believe that. I believe that we're an army of angels of light and we've been thrust into the deepest darkness to not just liberate ourselves, but liberate humanity and our entire planet. I believe we chose this as soul seeds. So many of us. And the sad thing about soul seeds, you know, people that are here for that, a lot of them get taken out by their trauma. They never, ever find the way through of the liberation of their trauma. And that's where I'm so passionate about this. Because for me in my life, I always knew, I think you do too, so many of you, you know you're here for something great. Say yes if that's true. Say yes if you know you're here for something great. But, and then you looked at your life and you go, but my God, how could it have ended up like this? right? You know you're here for something. And until, yes, we chose tough work. We did. Until you get free of your trauma, God doesn't have room to move through you. Doesn't have room, right? And we're not meant to be like a salmon swimming up a stream with a brick on your head. We're meant to be free. When you're free, God, source, creation can step in you and move through you. Every single quantum freedom healing you are doing, you are losing the trauma and you're filling with source and God to step through you and move through you. It is 
People come to me all the time and they're like, Melanie, I want to find my mission. And I say to them, you're your mission. You are the mission. Get the trauma out and get God in and then you will be your, then your mission will take off. You will not be able to stop it. Does that make sense? Does somewhere in your cells know that's the truth? Does somewhere in your cells know that I'm telling you the truth? I hope so. Okay, okay. So I'm going to give you a couple of resources. So those of you that just want my free resources, if you're not on my free resources, I want you to jump on them. So it's Melanie Tonia Evans, my name, dot com forward slash free course. Two amazing ebooks. Lots of great information that's going to really help you get your sanity and your soul back. I want you to jump on that. MelanieToniaEvans.com forward slash free course. Now, if you are ready for corner freedom healing, as of today, my army of angels, my corner freedom healing NARP team can help you, hold you, you get the full course. All of the instructions are in there. It's very simple. The support team are there. You've got the forum there. Today, you can start getting the trauma out and getting God in fast. It 50 X's your healing. The people in our community that work with NARP, 50 X their recovery journey. And it's not a mere recovery, it's a thriver recovery. So that's MelanieToniaEvans.com forward slash N for Nelly, A for Apple, R for Robert, P for Peter. It's fully money back guarantee. I take all the risk. It costs less than three counseling sessions and you have it for life. For life. And the NARP journey is not just recovery from narcissistic abuse. It's recovery of every area of your life that has not worked in a fast quantum straight line. So MelanieToniEvans.com forward slash NARP. You can pay it off, small monthly fee. Okay, it's your answer to life. I'm actually not exaggerating. It is your answer to the life you want from the inside out. That's what it's done for me. Thousands of others from all over the world. Okay, so does anybody have a question before I jump off? I know that's a lot of information. You might want to watch this again, but it's actually very simple. It's so simple. Right, you're going to go back to Empowered Self Module with Renewed Zest. Yes, life from the inside do you know what? When I go into my head, I don't do it very often, and try to work my way out of a trauma, it's ridiculous. If I just go to a module and I release it and bring God's source in, I get my answer, I get my power every time. Okay? Does anybody have a question? And it's fast. And I'm like, why did I spend two days thinking about it when I could do half an hour and now I'm aligned? Is there a link between MS and narc abuse? Absolutely, Snow Queen. I really believe dis-ease is out of alignment and trauma. So the things mm. that have healed in uh, mm. our community have been crazy, mm. absolutely crazy. Mm. Like me, I healed the unhealable. Mm. All right, darlings. Mm. All right, honeys. Um beautiful mm. life thank you for being with me i hope this is life-changing mm. and saving for you but what's mm. the definition of insanity amazing people doing mm. the same stuff over and over and trying to get mm. a different result it doesn't work mm. all right love you mm. have a beautiful day and we're going to talk really soon mm. all right bye-bye lots of love mm.